welcome to the Christina Brands and Jeremy Angotti Christmas Spectacular. Ooh. I am one of your hosts, Paul Davidson. And I am Scott Norman. And we're alongside the one, the only, Jeremy Angotti. Howdy, welcome howdy, back howdy. to the set. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Yes, uh, in exchange for us not interrupting another faculty uh, event, yes. uh, Mr. Angotti and Ms. Brands uh, were willing to uh, come on our show independently down in the bunker. I think really they just didn't want to be seen in public with us. Is that's they? true. That's not, well, <laughs> no, but, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> But do not worry, we're still, I'm at least wearing my festive holiday sweater and drinking eggnog. This year I'm rocking a crying Jordan uh, holiday <laughs> uh, ugly sweater, but he's wearing a Santa hat. I see, I see that. Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, is there something about this Christmas in particular that inspired you to go with the crying Jordan meology? It's, it's the whole Alabama stuff, so yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, the missing missing the play. That and the fact that it's the near the end of school, and so all teachers look like this near the end of school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll do it. Um, uh, what what sweater do you have on, uh, Mr. Angotti? What? Go ahead and present it to the. Yes, your ugly holiday sweater. What is the one that you're on? Uh, it just says uh, it's just a Sasquatch yeah. with a Santa hat on, and it says I believe. Oh, okay, mother. I got you. Yeah, I, I got like you. that one. It's just, it's nice. Sometimes I use it, honey. He got so, it from Sears. Yeah, <laughs> Kmart actually. Kmart for the clothes out. Yeah, I think mine mine is very uh, illustrative. It's uh, illustrative. How do you say it? Illustrative. It's it's got a cloud, and then there's small reindeer falling from it. Uh, I, I'm not entirely. I uh, I think it's a pun of some sort. I, I'm not entirely sure. I think that was one of your de- one of your uh, doors a couple years ago. I mean, hey, it, it might be. Might have been. All right, so. Six, five, five years ago. Yeah. So, you know how this works. Uh, we can kind of just talk about some Christmas stuff. So, uh, you already know me and Mr. Norman's top three Christmas movies, but Mr. Angotti, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Let's start with number three and work our way up to number one, the granddaddy of them all. So, if you were to rank them, what is like the number three Christmas movie uh, you go into? You know, the Christmas story. Oh, you're going to put your eye out, you know, with the baby gun. Cause like, so that's number three? That's number three. Okay. Because uh, when I was a kid, uh, we would go out to my, my dad's mom and dad, my granddad and my grandmama. They lived right outside of Wardell. And so they had, he had his old tractor shed. And, like, there'd be birds getting there, like, sparrows and stuff. And, uh-huh. you know, of course, I wasn't thinking about the metal tin on the back side of the barn. So, like, I would shoot, and as the BB come ricocheting at me and hit me between the eyes almost, I was like, man, I can remember when I was a kid, I was like, man, that, that movie's no joke. That's really going to put your eye out. Now, when, so, it, when it did hit you, did you say, fudge? I see, I see it. I see it. Well, I see it. I don't think we can say that. I said a lot of things. That's probably eight or nine, and I knew how to say them all. Um, I knew French before I knew English. So yeah. So are you one? Are you one of those people that actually put it on there on Christmas Eve into Christmas Day and just have that playing in the background? Oh, uh, dude, it's on it's TBS. Like, well, like my sister, she comes down. My sister, my brother-in-law, my two nieces, and they come down. And of course, when you know they they live in Ohio. And uh, my brother in law's in the Air Force. So when they come down, my niece, no my, my, uh, my nieces, you know, it's like they're coming down to see the country cousins, you know, my, my two kids. And of course, they realize that, you know, uh, Uncle Bubba, it's going, there's going to be something go down. It's going down like six flats on the school bus. So we're going to do something dumb. I mean, <laughs> there's been inf- infamous uh, uh, gratuitous violence thrown at them, there's been fireworks. They have been shot. Wait, but over. fireworks on Christmas? Yeah, dude. We live in a country. <laughs> now, are so we talking about fireworks? Weather? Like, I know about that for like New Year's and whatnot, but there's <laughs> some fuses light 365 days a year. <laughs> Roman candle. Hey, there is no. That should be the subtitle is, for this episode. As fuses soon, light 365. As soon as as soon as Angotti's out of the city limits, he's rolling out of his truck with a Roman candle just popping. Hey, <laughs> yeah, my, I, I'm just. I can't wait till my my kids get older because like I I tell some of my high schoolers like. My three year old, my three year old's a gangster. Y'all yeah, better watch out. She don't care. <laughs> and like some of my seniors last year didn't believe me, and they were eating. And like she was two, she's like walked up and took their hamburger and just like looked at them, and they looked at me and it's like, Miss Ringa, I'm like, oh, she took my sandwich before she took y'all. So I to know. <laughs> you know, but like yeah, so you know, we'll go out. We'll sh- you know we'll shoot. We we do a lot of things because like when my nieces come down, they don't get to do. They don't get to do those things. So like uh, one summer, I was running Polly Pipe, and my my sister and them was in. So I took my my oldest niece out. She I didn't know that my brother in law hadn't let her drive yet. So I was like, "Hey, I'm tired of driving. Get over here." So I just like got out, got on the other side of the flatbed, and she's just like sitting there. And she's like, "Um, 
I was like, you having a stroke or what's wrong, kid? She goes, uh, Uncle Uncle Bubba, I've uh, I've never driven before. I said, well, back out here's a good time to learn. Put uh-huh. your foot on the brake, pull it down to D, and go on. And she did good. And then I until she I, hit the ditch. No, she I, <laughs> she kept it, she kept it between Slowly you know rolling. between the uh, between the ditches. But I felt bad. You know, I had to come clean to my sister, and I came clean to her first. And her, my sister's eyes got so big, and I was like, uh, I'm so sorry. Because, you know, it's like a father deal. And I, I thought she'd already driven somewhere because yeah. she's getting close to the age. And she was like, you know, my sister come to me later and she's like, so I told Tony. I'm like, oh, God, it's going to be so bad. She goes, no, he, he was actually happy you did that. I'm like, so for once I didn't screw up in Tony's <laughs> eyes. That's <laughs> great. You know? But, yeah, back to the fireworks, you know, there's there's – like I've got, we are up. literally on a a rabbit hole of a rabbit <laughs> oh, hole yeah. of a rabbit hole. Right it, now. Yeah, we went around our elbow to get to our hand. <laughs> there's no doubt. But uh, yeah, fireworks. They it it it'll happen. So I mean, and, and that's just it. It doesn't matter if you're family, friend, or the UPS man. We 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 include everybody. And ladies and gentlemen, that was just his third favorite movie. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's the third favorite movie. So uh, number two, your number no, two Christmas so, movie. So no, I, I can't. I, one and two is a tie. I've been thinking about this, how to okay. break this tie. So when I was a kid, many, many moons ago, Star Wars first come out. Yes. Well, you know, they've done Star Wars, Star Wars like completely backwards. You know, yeah. like it's nothing's in order. Four, so, five, six, one, two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, where'd y'all Seven, go? Eight, nine. Like, <laughs> yeah. did y'all go to the Angotti School of Math there or what? <laughs> And it drove me nuts, but I can remember as a kid when Star Wars come out, we would literally go up, like, to get HBO, we'd have to go up and hit the TV three times, tap on a cable box, go three, four, five, five, three, four, bam, hit it, and HBO would come on. Uh-huh. And with Star Wars, it's on Sunday nights. It always come on Sunday nights, and HBO would ah, come across there, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm not <laughs> at a theater. This is awesome. So, like, Star Wars, I've always, always loved Star Wars. And it's not just uh, the the space-type stuff. It's it's everything that went into it. But between all the Star Wars and uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Christmas. All right. So, we'll work with that. What's your Star Wars order? Like, what's the order that you would say you have to watch? Like, if you were to start a Star Wars marathon right now, what would be the order that you, you would watch one, the movie? You start with four. Oh, I'll start with one. You start with Phantom Menace and work your way all the yeah. way through? Yeah, because uh, numerically it says one. So my, <laughs> o, so my OCD, I mean, like, I have OCD, and I, and I think that's a lot of things my, my kids in my classes don't realize. Like, my shop right now is driving me nuts. Like, it keeps me up at night because it's not perfectly in order. So, like, I have OCD. So, like, oh, let's watch number three. And, like, I can't even remember all the names anymore. But, like, let's watch number three. No. We watch number one, and then my, my dad. My and then dad, in two hours, we'll watch number two. Yeah, yeah like my dad's like, well, number three's fine. It's the one I got. I'm like, I will kill you, father. I will take you out. This will that sounds be like a, Star Wars. This will literally be Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker yeah. going at it. Like I will, I will smoke you with a turkey leg right now. We start with number one, dude. Dad's like, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, yes, it is a big deal, Dad. You know, while we're while we're on side notes, how do you feel about Missouri's city classification system, which goes from smallest to largest, village, class four, class three, charter? I think you're stupid. <laughs> I don't. I, why can't Why can't you just say village, town, city? Yeah, I mean that'd be great, but like Ron Paul Peel said it. Just for the record, there it. are there are no one or two. It goes village four three charter. And who came up with that? <laughs> I have no idea. Who, 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 I mean, it's, welcome it, to Missouri. Anyway, sorry, we can continue. I mean, yeah. So, but I, I like to watch them in numerical order. We tried one Christmas to watch them how they originally came out. So four, five, six, one, two, yeah. three. In like, I was spinning gears ten minutes into the ten minutes before it ever got going good on four. I'm like, well, oh, can't do it. I'm so, getting hives. I'm so, getting hives. so you're definitely not a machete watcher. The machete way of watching them is you watch one and or four and five, and then you go back to two and three, and then you watch six. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, it's it's, it's I can't do that. And you don't watch one at all. You know, no, no, one is horrible. <laughs> one, one is kind of one. I'll be honest with you, I love Star Wars, but like. One's kind of dumb. Yeah, it's like sand. That's why. That's it why gets you. Everywhere. That's why yeah. you. That's why you skip one. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and even every time Wasn't I watch that one, it, no, that was two. Where he says that line, 
then it's he says, oh, I, no, I'm I not, hate I'm not a, I'm It not gets a, everywhere. I'm not a prequel person. I start with four. So. Yeah, so, you know, and that's a big deal. Like, we'll turn the fireplace on, everybody gets like snacks, and we start watching them. We'll watch so many one night, start there the next night and do that. Because my sister, my brother-in-law, I, 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 I nerd out. Like I, like, I literally love Star Wars. Can so. I just admit something about Star Wars that you'll probably hate then? What's that? One of my favorite characters growing up was Jar Jar. Oh, he is, dude. How can y'all know that guy? <laughs> oh, see, there you go. There's so many Jar Jar haters. We got some Jar Jar tears. One, la- yeah. one, one last question I have before we move to Christmas Vacation. Yes, sir. Uh, how do you include, like, those new prequel movies into your order? I can't even. I can't. Oh, God. Dude, that's, like Rogue that, One, a solo, uh, the Han know, Solo movie. The Han Solo, that was good. But I, I feel like, in my mind, which is like a rabbit hole, let's just face it. <laughs> in my mind, those are movies you should watch after everything else. You should watch them at the very end. Like so Rogue was, One was good, but I still like. But some, you don't, you don't shove it in between three and four. I, I mean, I don't feel like. I mean, you should, and I've done that. But like, uh, I don't know. It, it's it's one of those deals where okay, this is what I had. Okay, these are add-ons. You know, I've got the pickup truck. Let's let's drive the pickup truck. Oh, now I'm gonna get air conditioner and power windows. Let's throw that on afterwards. I mean, you can throw them in there, yes. But like, I, you know, I just love I love all of them. And that's that's the other thing is is that's what I told uh, Mr. Hendricks one day. You know, I'm not a music guy. Like I took band in high school. Like I I played drums. You know, I played tri snare and bass. And I'm I'm no lyrical genius by any means. You're no musical genius, but. The amount of money, if you look at the behind the scenes that they've done of Star Wars, and you look at the amount of money they've just spent on like the orchestra part of it. Oh, yeah. But who John wouldn't Williams. want to walk into your house when you get home, your family be there, and they'd start playing one of those songs? I used to just, dun. like, I had the soundtrack for episode four, just like the classic soundtrack, yeah. and I would just listen to it driving in the car. Like if if I get something like that, that has a magnet, that when I get close to it, it starts playing. Uh, uh, shoot the thrill by ACDC when I walk in the house. I'll be like looking at the kids, uh, give, them the, you can actually, give them the uh, pistol fingers. Do that with uh, all these smart home things. That exist. Yeah, we live in the country, bro. We ain't got no. We ain't got no. I mean, you don't. You don't need the internet. You just like using the. I probably the metal plate in my head will probably set off something. <laughs> it's like an EMP. Something. Speaking of the metal plate in people's heads, although in cousin Eddie's head it's a plastic plate. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> ding ding ding. Christmas vacation. Why Christmas vacation? Uh, okay. Possibly it rivaling Star Wars for number one. So. I, okay, that is literally my family. My, my so my mom's originally from St. Charles. So uh, my grandmother, and my grandfather, father would come down from St. Charles. Okay, my grandma and granddaddy lived two miles outside Wardell. It was a big track to come into Wardell for them. It was a big deal to come to town, <laughs> not on Saturdays. So like they came to the house and like literally it's a redneck family Christmas, cause like. You like if mom and dad got into it over Christmas, you knew dad was mad. Like you knew and because so he would go out and just start decorating the house. No, we had the same strand. This is no lie. In fact, man, we could call him right now. If he wouldn't use foul language, I'd call him and we'd ask him. But he'd be there'd be a lot of foul language fly. But like, like literally, we had the same strand of Christmas lights on the front of our house from the time I was in sixth grade to the time I graduated high school. It was the same strand. It was just like frayed wires. And like one year I plugged it up and it like it sparking and stuff. And I'm like, I'm going to set the house on fire. And finally it just kind of fizzled out. And I was like, well, that was short lived. And then finally one day I think, oh, he's putting a new roof on the house. Dad started pulling them off in July. He's like, ah, oh, we don't need these anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, he plugged them in one year. And so, you know, but like, uh, like your mom and dad, that's what's so funny. Like around Christmas time, you know. Like the famous line, it's the holidays, Audrey. Everybody's miserable, you know. <laughs> so like, if mom and dad got into it, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Dad would be at the kitchen sink scrubbing the dish with one hand, and he'd be like rubbing a hole in a portion of the plate like this. And I'd be like, hey, he's mad, some, you know. And so, and there'd be all this wrapping paper flying and stuff. But like, that is literally, I, I cannot be any more serious that that is my family in a nutshell. Like flying stuff, like it, it just like all those instances, the the attic door. Like one Christmas, this is no kidding. My dad buys my mom a brand new laptop computer. She's working working on her specialist degree. Buys her a brand new laptop computer. Like okay. I go with him, we get a good one. You know, it's like I'm like, Dad, you did really good. Like we high five, chest bump, <laughs> pistol fingers. I was gonna say he's he's doing pistol fingers. You yeah, can't see so him. <laughs> we did all that, and then mom mom's like, okay, I need you to go out to the garage and get your dad's Christmas present. 
And I was looking at her, I was like, no, I think it's out there. It's the attic door, Mom. She goes, yeah, that's your dad's Christmas present. No, no, I'm not in on this. <laughs> I'm not getting in on this. So, like, my mom gave my dad an attic door for Christmas. And the reason why she, he got an attic door for Christmas is is he wouldn't replace the original attic door that took three people to hang on and bounce up and down to get down. Uh-huh. And so, like, mom couldn't get a Christmas decoration down. So, it was kind of a back-ended gift. It was really for mom. <laughs> yeah. She needed dad to put it up. That Christmas, we don't even speak of that Christmas anymore. <laughs> right. Those like the those who speak the name you're not supposed to so speak. So like the like, amazing gift is met with Baltimore. Back, you know. Met with backhanded. You should have done this already. Oh, dude, there's been laser <laughs> beam eyes. There's been minimal. There's been maximum amount of uh, sign language that's been given between parents at the dinner table while grandchildren children aren't looking. There's been mouth work. There's, there's been. I, I want to say. So as soon, as soon as they're yeah. not, lo- as soon as they, they're like, hey, look at that over there. And yeah. They're just kind look, of, kids, a deer. You know, it's like a, you know, like you literally a small bird flew out of his hand. Yeah. There. That was a, yeah. So like, like literally, like that, that, that movie is literally what it would be like growing up in my house. And, and that's the thing, man. My my mom and dad were both teachers. You know, they are not rich people by any means. But I do not regret anything about my childhood because, like, we would always – it just always worked out. We always did stuff. And then the other side of that is is when I started dating my wife the first Christmas, my mother-in-law, we were watching that, and my mother-in-law would just, like, you know, she was rolling and laughing. And anybody that knew Beth Cross knew she was very, you know, quiet and controlled and all that, but she would just get the rolling laughing. Well, I could – watching Christmas vacation. Yeah, and I was just like – I was like – because I said, oh, my God, it's a – it's the movie made after my family. You know, it's like all those National Lampoon movies. And that's movies. the thing that makes my mother-in-law laugh the hardest. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I used to be, I used to have that line memorized. It's Chevy Chase where he loses his mind, four flushing, you know, yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. I used to say that every Christmas. And we, me, I would say it all the time. And I just like rattle that whole thing off. And like she would text me, where's the talent all? You know, the end <laughs> part and all that. So it, it was hilariously funny, but like when when she passed away that first Christmas, we watched it and we still watch it. But I just don't memorize the lines anymore. But you know, that whole not only not only that part with her, but just the, with my family and stuff. I mean, I don't care. I, I feel like the Pope would laugh at that movie, dude. It's just like, <laughs> if you can't laugh, at, if you can't laugh at that movie, you ne- you just can't laugh. You know? I could see Francis. I was gonna say, I feel like the current Pope I think would laugh Francis, a lot. I don't think like, Benedict the Sixteenth no, would laugh at no. that. But I could see uh, Francis laughing. Yeah. At it. All right, so uh, those are his top three movies. So uh, check them out. It's gonna take you a while to get through the entirety of the Star Wars catalog. And I do keep my, I keep all my Star Wars DVDs. I bought the, or I got the whole collection for one Christmas finally. Uh So the the shabby versions I leave out for the kids to mess up and all that. But the snobby version, but the Christmas version, the snobby version is in my gun safe, locked up. Nobody (laughs) touches it. Like I have cotton gloves. Yeah. No, no Cheeto fingers. No Cheeto fingers. No boogers. No nothing on them. So yeah. All right. Uh, What about your top three Christmas songs, or what's your favorite Christmas song? We'll go with that. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. Just number one. We're cutting to the chase on this one. Man, uh, I don't know. I, I, I love Christmas music. Uh, probably any Christmas things that uh, Nat King Cole did. Nat King Cole? Or uh, Michael Bublé. Those are Michael Bublé? <laughs> Y'all didn't know I could say that, did you? I know what you're thinking. That was coming out. I like, saw Judgey Eyes coming from that Norman. Came, that came from Norm. my field. <laughs> yeah, that, I, it's just a little surprising. Norm? That kind of hurt my feelings. <laughs> Michelle Bubble. Um. No, uh, like anything those guys sing... Um, you know, uh, my mother-in-law, when she, we, I had a CD, and it meant it's untimely demise in my truck, much as anything does. But uh, I had her playing on the church organ. Some, I had some on there that she was playing some Christmas songs on. So you know, man, I, I love, I love, uh, I love Christmas music. It's a good thing, you know. If you can't get in the spirit with Christmas music, you just ain't gonna get in the spirit. Nah, you're you know? really not. All right, so that, that's his top three list. Okay. That's his top three list. You're going to go find Miss Brown. I am. She got I'm, lost I'm, on her I'm way to, into out. the bu- bunker, so she's she'll be back. She's in the snow somewhere. Yeah, she's so outside in the snow. Uh, I am trying Balto to find her way into the... to uh, track her down. All right. Well, what, while she, he is looking for Miss Brands, <coughs> uh, we got two more questions for you. The first one is, when, all right, so this is the big debate last year between uh, me and Norman while we were talking about this. When can you officially start decorating for Christmas? Oh, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the day that you can Thanksgiving, start. Thanksgiving, it's going down. It's not, it's a, the, the, uh, as soon as the turkey's been devoured? No, like... While the turkey is my cooking. Wife, <laughs> my wife, 
she will drop the hammer. Like, if we got out of school on Friday, and like that Friday night, because she, you know, they she they work all Thanksgiving week except for Thanksgiving day, and they take Friday off. So like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, she's at work. So like Friday night, she's like, so, or Thursday night, she's like, so tomorrow night, here's the game plan. Do you think you could get the tree down for me? I'm like, honey, it's in three plastic boxes. Just put the kids on the top of them, let them ride them down the stairs. <laughs> when they hit the wall, it'll be all right. It'll be fine. The wall's solid. What about the kids? They're hard headed. They're they're half angotty, so they might get. But like, you know, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the time. And that's when my mom would. And my mom, she was she was smart. Like in the mornings, before after we got ready for school, she'd get us ready. She'd make us get ready 20 minutes early. So 20 minutes before we left, we would be putting up decorations and stuff so we could. You know, we were decorating in the mornings. Mom was the time time manager, cruncher. So yeah. All right. So there we go, and we found Miss Brands, but we lost Mr. Norman in that blizzard, so we'll figure out from there. She's getting plugged in uh, now that we can, now she can join the festivities. We were just discussing when is the time that you are, you can officially start decorating for Christmas? After Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. Always after so Thanksgiving. So it's been pretty much anonymous, or unanimous, or whatever that word is, uh, to, on that front. Uh, Norman's wife, apparently, wants to start decorating in July. My De- sister decorates um, usually, both sisters actually, usually after Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> My house is after Thanksgiving. My mother's house is usually the weekend before Christmas. The weekend? That's what I'm talking about. Push off to the last minute. <laughs> She's like, ah, I'm going to get her done. Kick it in the driveway right there. The, um... I will say that the tree is currently in the house. That's all that matters. But there is no decorations on it. That's what I'm talking about. Does it really need decorations? No. The tree is the point. If they made one of them, you know, uh, on the Grinch, where that one lady's shooting the light bulbs out of the gun, I'm like, man, if they so invented one of them, I don't care what it costs me. I would buy them. Dum, 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 just like putting up Christmas lights. That'd be awesome. But yeah. That's 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 what uh, Mr. Angotti dreams of night is uh, weaponized Christmas decorating. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> All right. right. So we talked about Mr. Angotti's top three favorite movies and songs. We'll start off with yours. Start with number three and work your way to number one. What is your favorite Christmas movie? From three up. Three up. Yep. Starting three. three working is, your way up. Three is um, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That was his number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why do you love uh, Christmas Vacation so much? It's a dysfunction. It makes you feel like your family is really not that bad. <laughs> well, your fa- you made it. It made you feel like your family's not that bad. It made Mr. Angotti feel at home. Yeah, <laughs> it was normal. You met you met you talk with yeah. Dad. I mean, like she knows Dad. From, you know, she knows my dad. So she like she she she's known me for forever. So like that's the norm for us. Like I said, it makes me feel not so bad about yeah. the def- dysfunction that happens at our family Christmases. <laughs> All right. Uh, number two, then. <laughs> Would be Charlie Brown Christmas. A Charlie Brown Christmas, really? Huh. All right. And then uh, why uh, Charlie Brown Christmas? Any particular reason? Just the story behind it. Story behind it. Personally, I'm a big fan of the Charlie Brown Christmas music. I like that. That's that. That's my... That's the thing that kind of gets me going. I, I, that's one of the things I'll even put on in my classroom while they're working on stuff. Be like, here, just listen to this. And then number one, the creme de la creme of all Christmas movies. It's how the Grinch stole Christmas, but it has to be the original 1966 cartoon. Oh, not, not any school. of the two newer ones no. that have come out. Have you seen the newest one that came out? Actually, my students are watching it right now, so <laughs> the I've been watching the, car- yeah, the yeah, new yeah, cartoon. We, yeah, we watched it. The other I've night. been watching it as so it still does been, not hold a no, candle to the it has original. To be the original. The right. OG version, right which is there. which is very apropos considering your ugly Christmas sweater that you're rocking has the Grinch on it. So yes. there we go. The resting Grinch face is in fact what it says. So there we go. So you can, it's kind of like a metaphor for my life. You can be mean, but still have a heart. heart. <laughs> and sometimes it grows three sizes. <laughs> tink, tink, tink. <laughs> All right. So those are the top three Christmas movies. What about your Christmas song? Your Christmas playlist? Your top three Christmas songs? Okay, three to start with. The first two are, number two and number three are Christmas hymns. Okay. So these are church music. Um, three is We Three Kings. We Three Kings. Number two would be Angels We Have Heard on High. And I would really like our um, beta 
state champion in performing arts. I would love to hear her sing that. Okay. She, I'm going to have to get her into the Catholic Church <laughs> and <laughs> get her to, or just bring her a hymnal in, because I think she could really. Oh, she uh, will. I love the good. high notes, yeah. but I can't hit those high she notes. She will on that. She, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, but in fact, tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, I will actually. Well, tomorrow is or tomorrow is Christmas because this is dropping on Christmas Eve. I will kidnap her and bring her to there your I house go. and force her to sing it to you sing. during second hour. Dance, dance for the lady, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like cousin Eddie. <laughs> All right. And then number one is Carol of the Bells, but my favorite version of Carol of the Bells is Trans Siberian Orchestra's Carol of the Bells. You know, most of the time they think uh, that is actually not Carol of the Bells. It's a slightly different song. Well, their version is probably my favorite. I actually do like Carol of the Bells if it is done by a choir that knows what they are, you know, with the handbells. <laughs> <laughs> so so next year for Beta, uh, get ready for the group talent to be Miss Brands teaching you how to oh, do the handbells. Oh, that would be horrible. Ding, 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 ding. That'd be awesome. Boom. That'd be awesome. That's, uh, we'll put Mr. Norman in charge of that. <laughs> in fact, that's probably... Since he's, he's pr- not in here. Yeah, he, he disappeared in the snow. He's actually probably just trying to find bells. Let's have a vote right now <laughs> since Norm's not here. All, All in favor, favor. of Mr. Norman, Norman being in charge of bells, say aye. Kids? Aye. Kids? Okay. Go yeah. Too. Norm gets it. All right. And then, of course, uh, we're almost done. We're about to wrap up. The last question that I have is, what are, y'all, what are your plans for Christmas? Sure. What are you planning to do Christmas? I mean, PD, it's the holidays. Everybody's miserable. I just plan, <laughs> plan on surviving it, bro. You know, I'm going to get my Snuggie, get my bean bag, a big bag of hot Cheetos, and some uh, some of that there uh, aloe vera water they drink, and <laughs> just chill, you know, just chill out, catch some Netflix. Not really. No, no man, I got so much stuff to do. Uh, my sister, brother-in-law, nieces are coming in, and, so I'm going to deep fry. This will be my second turkey I deep fried. I deep fried the first one Thanksgiving. Did the, not die. I'm say, and, it didn't and, no, it did not explode. But I did. I did have. I do have it on video. And I did wear safety glasses, believe it or not. I have proof. I did the whole thing. So I'm just like, the whole time I'm putting it in, I'm like, God, please don't let this be how I go out. Because, you know, it's like, you know. That, that old gypsy woman said I was going to be killed by a turkey. That I lady didn't know at the it was going to be this turkey. <laughs> I thought that she meant by the old turkey, you know, down the road because he can't see when he drives. But, no. Nah. No. Nah, uh, and I think I'm, we're going to try to go to a, a couple of and maybe a rodeo over Christmas. So, you know, just uh, I'll be up here at the shop working. we got stuff up here to do, FFA stuff. And some of my kids are going to come up and we're going to start practicing. So, um. Uh, you know, just just the norm, not that, that norm, norm. <laughs> but the norm. So you know, just be up here and hit Connery and living a dream, man, living a dream. All right, and Miss Brands, what's your Christmas plans? Other than, of course, the fam- traditional family. <laughs> when I get sick of them, go back to the house where it's quiet, <laughs> church, and catching up on sleep. <laughs> Man, this sounds good. Are y'all Christmas Eve church people or Christmas Day cr- church people? Day. I, day. That's the better way to go. Do you go Christmas Eve? <laughs> well, I, we we went Christmas Eve before, and I really, really liked it. But I I'm do just, like it. It's but just so many people. people. And that's the deal. And, and I ain't trying to be mean or rude, but they need to pass out snacks. <laughs> And I think, you know, it's a great time, to, you know, spirits moving through church and it's, you know, you're, it's very humbling and everything. And I remember my first, my first Christmas with Mary Hannah and Thad at, you know, a Christmas Eve deal up here at the Catholic Church. I was like, man, this is awesome. But like an hour and a half in, I'm like, man, I need a snack. So like I reach over and I got my hand. It didn't last that long in the morning. Well, no, I, like, I like, I reach over and I got my hand in Thad's fruit loops. I'm like, taking the fruit loops and Mary Hannah slaps my hand, but. You know, but it, I mean, it's the same way here at school because, like, by fourth hour, I'm hungry. I, like, I'm chewing on my podium, so, you know. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I do like midnight mass. That's, yeah. Midnight mass. Okay. It is awesome, but you better eat a big meal for you go because it is. <laughs> you got to stretch it out. Well, I don't typically get up in the middle of the night and eat, so. Man, I'm, I'm yeah, when I get up, I'm, like, looking for something because it's fixing to be on because I ain't going back to bed. Yeah. So. He's, he's going to get his night ham on. That, that yeah. Leftover Christmas ham, it's not going to survive the night. But I'm not driving <laughs> to go to Midnight Mass, so unless we have it here. No, once we get the kids down now, I mean, short of chloroforming them. <laughs> I mean, you know, 
once they're down, we ain't, we won't get them back up. And we hadn't done midnight mass probably since Mary May's been born. You know, so because she's a pretty well, both of us pretty light sleepers, and they get up at four thirty. You know, almost every morning, except when we need them to really get up at four thirty. So, <laughs> but no, but no, we're the midnight midnight mass and Christmas Eve. That's kind of when we like to go. I always got saddled with having to serve uh, Christmas morning mass, so that's why I got kind of used to that. All right, but I think that's it. So uh, until next time, my name's been Paul Davidson, and this has been. The Grinch. The Grinch and the man who stole Christmas. That's right. And this has been the TDWG podcast. There we go. Thank you all. (laughs)